Yeah, Henry, so far it's uh, such a great pleasure, and we, we all treasure the time being with you. We, <laughs> we know that this is, you know, only by God's grace we can get to spend time. Perfect timing. You know, with, <laughs> with you and Julius, like, you know, you, you, you are like the, the, the high top, top tier of the God's, you know, uh, generals, you know, and, oh my. and fighting in the kingdom, you know, in that high level. So oh we gosh. were like, so, mm. so blessed. And we hope to uh, inherit, you know, some of your anointing during the uh, interview. And, Hallelujah. And, 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 yeah. And te listening to your teachings and sharings. Well, it, it is a joy to impart that to you because uh, I, God has given me such a love for the people of Asia. Uh, my children don't like to hear it, but I've said, you know, if the Lord took my wife home, I think I'd go over to Asia oh. and I'd live there. Um, wow. In Okinawa, they have a, a beautiful big white church. They call it the White House. Mm -hmm. And we walk the grounds and uh, we walk many grounds. Mm. And finally, when we got on that ground, I told the pastor, I said, this is it. This <laughs> is where you got to build your church. I know it. All the others, I had no peace. From the second I got out of the car, I have peace. This is it. Mm. Well, it was just wilderness-like. No one was building out there yet mm. in Okinawa and near Yamatan Village. And that's where the American forces first landed on the Battle of Okinawa. Oh. And uh, so it hasn't built up because it's kind of like so much bloodshed and mm. such a curse on the land and all. Oh, and uh, if you know me at all, where there's been major battles, there's major blood in the ground. Mm -hmm. And where there's major bloodshed in the ground, there's no prosperity. Oh. People live in degraded, uh, repeated degradation generation after generation. And it didn't look like a good place, but we had been praying Yamatan Village and that whole region mm even in caves where grandfathers cut the throats of their grandchildren and granddaughters. And, wow. And then their own wife, if she was alive and throat, because the Japanese Defense Force told them, if the, the Americans capture, they'll rape your little girls and they'll torture you. And oh. so they put them in these caves and said, now kill each other, you know, and I prayed caves there. Oh. So that's to give you an understanding of the area there of Yamatan village, one cave, 250. The knives were still there when we crawled down into those limestone oh. caves. The knives are there. They've removed the bones and all, but uh, the knives are there. The blood is still, the ground is red. The sand is red with blood there and the blood crying out, and we've been remitting the sins of the innocent blood. Oh. And when that goes into the ground, it just puts a curse in the region until that is broken. In Revelation, it says that they cry from under the altar day and night, yeah. the martyrs. How long till you avenge our blood? And so the theme of my life and what's taken me to Asia and all over 55 nations is is where is the innocent blood crying out? And when we go as teams and walk and pray that and break the curse off the land, prosperity comes in. Hmm. Now there's hotels, lodges, and everything there. Hmm. But when we first walked that land, there was nothing. It was desolate. And they said, you have peace here? This is remote. Hmm. They bought so they could buy a large acreage, which was wonderful, yeah. very reasonable. Yes. yes. And then a big developer comes in, buys right beside them, wants to build half million to million dollar homes minimum, starting mm -hmm. to multi-million dollar homes, and wants to help them develop the ground and the church. And so they got far better deal in, in the building than they ever hoped. Mm -hmm. And they have 12 gates in the White House Church of the Gates of Jerusalem. Oh. And up in the entryway, up on the side, they have what they call the prophet's quarters. And I don't call myself a prophet, but they do. <laughs> and that's your place, Henry. That's why I said I'd probably go and live in Asia Oh, uh, okay. if the Lord took my wife home. Right. And the children say, Dad. I said, well, I'd come home and visit, but uh, I'd keep working Asia uh, the rest of my life. So 
Anyhow, I just say that kind of to help you understand my love for Asia mm. and the people of Asia. And, wow. uh, we are so blessed. So it's, uh, I think my final work, they're trying to pull me into Africa now. And uh, most of Africa I've been is, Ag is Egypt and Ethiopia. And I don't want any more. I really don't. Uh, I want to stick with Asia, but mm. Lord, it's up to you. But anyhow. Okay. That's, that's where we are right now. Okay, thank you. Let me <coughs> brief, give a brief of what you said in, you know, in Chinese. So, Heng Li Ge Luo Fa Mu Si, he was doing a very important work in the Sinsou Dao Gao, which is that God has called him to many different places, to have a place where he can be able to choose. Then he went to that place to do the work. Why? 当地土土地上面有这种无辜人的血，在上面的时候呢，就会带来历代一代一代一代一代的这种的，嗯，叫做贫穷或者是痛苦，或是然后呢不会兴旺，不会兴盛，所以呢，神就带领他到不同的地方去做这种的呃洁净的祷告。那其中一个地方就是冲绳岛，那冲绳岛那个地方。当初是美军登陆的地方，他讲的那个地名，那在那里呢？呃，经过他的常常去那边祷告，因为他们在那里就建立了一个教会，叫做 White House， 呃 ，Church 啊、呃，这个地方。那这个是格布呃格亨利格洛法牧师呢，他呃特别提到他对整个亚洲呃，特别是那个中国人，还有对那个呃日本。中呃，这反正亚洲地带的他特别有这样子灵魂上的负担，所以他打算说，他如果以后退休以后，那么他就想要去呃住在那里。OK， 好 ，Yeah， let's continue. Thank you. Yeah, from Okinawa. So, yeah. In less than two hours, I can be in Taiwan. In Taiwan, we, okay, we, we, <laughs> we can go there visit you too. So daily easily, flights yeah. out of Oka, out of yeah. Okinawa to yeah. to Taiwan. So just happened mm. since we've been walking and praying to uh, Okinawa. Oh, just hold new it. airport, new flights to Taiwan, all over Asia now. Out of Ta out of Okinawa. So, 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 哇，附近的那些旅馆呐、啊、游乐设施啊，种种就开始兴盛，房地产呢开始兴盛起来。所以这是是一个见证，就是说，呃，本来是没有人要的地方，那么呃，经过这个祷告，洁净这个土地土，因为无辜人留下的罪，流流无辜人的血所造成的这些咒诅被清除了以后，在神的呃呃仆人的祷告以后，洁净的地土以后带来兴盛，带来兴旺。Uh, just eager, she's only a gentle. Okay, now um, we're gonna to um, ask you about how by divine appointment that you meet up with uh, Ron Wyatt. Oh, wow! <coughs> the Lord, the Lord spoke to me to walk and pray Jerusalem uh, in 1989, and uh. Actually, it was in 1988 after I came back from from uh, the experience in Rome I talked to you about and all that. And uh, oh, that's after that. I was really fighting it, and I told my wife, "I don't want to go to Jerusalem. Uh, it isn't that I don't love the Hebrew people; it's Jerusalem." And I I heard many years ago, innocent blood crying out of the ground. And there are places oh. all over the world where I could take you, where I heard innocent blood crying out of the ground. And it just mm. tears me up. And sometimes I have a vision of what happened there, here in America and Europe, in Asia, and over in Eastern, Western Europe. So that must be very burdensome to you. Oh. Right? I mean, you, you heard all this cry, and then sometimes you got the vision, oh. actually it's Witnessing what's seeing what's happening. I had seen by vision human sacrifices all oh. the way back to the Roman legions, and I knew this would predate the Roman legions, Jerusalem, and uh, had not walked the Middle East yet. I didn't want anything to do with the Middle East because there's so much bloodshed, and oh. so I said, "Well, Lord, 
At that time, my wife and I, the Lord would tell her the same country oh, that I would go. We oh. would wait on the Lord. I wouldn't tell her anything. He would tell her the same nation oh. and city that I was to walk or oh. territory. And so the Lord confirmed it with her and I still did not want to go. Well, normally, by the time the Lord confirmed it with my wife, telling no one my mission, within six days, the full monies would come in for the mission. <laughs> by telling no one. That was the... Wow. When I left the electronics company, that was our agreement. We were, we were set up very financially nice, you know, and comfortable. Mm. And I said, Lord... I grew up in Pentecost and I grew up watching kids with holes in the bottom of their shoes and cardboard in the bottom of them, you know, uh -huh. and, and knees that gone and uh, living p poverty, you know, and the kids out here in Arizona. I grew up here in Arizona, mm -hmm. born in Montana, but mm -hmm. uh, children, ministers, children going and picking cotton, you know, just for extra money to mm -hmm. have things they'd like to have. And, uh, I didn't want that. That's why I pursued my education and mm. wanted electronics. And uh, so I don't know if it was pride in me or not, but it, it was just a feeling that I don't believe in ministry. We should be in poverty. Yeah. We're king's kids. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. royalty. Yeah. And royalty, David said, I was old and young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging, begging bread. Yeah. But I had seen it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's not right. It wasn't right. Yeah. And I didn't want it. Mm. And I gauged my life up to that time mm. uh, that that's, this is the conditions, Lord. Mm. <laughs> you must bring in the full monies mm -hmm. to provide for my wife and my children mm -hmm. while I'm gone. Mm. And to get me there and mm. get me back, I'll trust you when I go to the country. Mm. I, I, I'm willing to live by faith in the country mm. not knowing anybody. And that was my commitment to the mm. Lord. Mm. Well, from the time God would confirm it to my wife, within six days, I mean, this happened repeatedly for years. Mm -hmm. Within six days, from 80, 84 to, to now, 80, 88, uh, God had provided within six days the full funds to take care of the family and me in my mission Hallelujah. without telling anybody Hallelujah. no prayer letters going out no announcement this is henry's mission wow and that's the way that's the way i laid it out to the lord before i left the country it is so real i mean <laughs> you're calling your steps are so real like wow we are our, our favorite uh, example is george Mueller of bristol that believed god for over ten thousand orphans in a time of the plague when but adults were dying right and left and he kept bringing them home and bringing more home and God would provide as he brought more home, filled his house up and God gave him a bigger house and then began building buildings for these. And by the time he was finished, he had taken care of 10,000 orphans and he'd sent money to Hudson, to Hudson Taylor in China. And it got to Hudson Taylor the day that the foreign mission was going to put him on the boat and send him back to England. Huh. And uh, because he was letting long hair grow and charcoal on his face to, and, and, and putting egg white on his eyelids to keep his eyes slanted. Now that's in his book, you know. And here comes, here comes <laughs> the money sent by wow. George Mueller six months before. Wow. Because it took six months Jeez. to sail from England to China. George Mueller here, oh. six months. Before. Well, this is our example, the book we have, the autobiography of oh. George Mueller. Wow. So my wife and I said, well, let's pattern our ministry and our life after him by faith and not tell people our needs. Wow. And so that's the setting of our life up to that time. And so what happens? I confirm it with my wife. I make gestures because she's sitting right over there. And uh, I confirm it with her. The Lord tells her Jerusalem and the border of England and Wales, between England and Wales, two places. Mm. Well, that means three months away from home. Mm. And six days go by, are almost finished. The night of the sixth day, I have a little meeting up in Owego, Lake Owego, mm -hmm. Oswego, Oregon. What had happened was 
the night of the sixth day, the monies come in for England. What my wife had calculated for lodging, for walking the border and all, she had calculated what would be needed for the family for the time I'd be gone, oh. but it didn't come in for Jerusalem. Oh. So I said, hallelujah, I don't have to walk Jerusalem. And the reason why you don't want to walk Jerusalem is? The innocent blood. Because you know there, oh. are, there have been so many. Just Tell like the, the Bible. Yes, what Jesus said. said on the Mount of Olives. Oh, Jerusalem. He wept over Jerusalem. Oh. How often would I have gathered you as a mother hen gathers her little chicks under her arm, but you would not. You've stoned the prophets. You've killed those. And, and so it's, mm. it's a bloody city. See what I mean? It had been literally torn down and rebuilt 10 times throughout antiquity. And I knew the bloodshed would be so loud, I wouldn't get a moment's rest. Huh. And so in my flesh, strictly my flesh, I was fighting it. And so it didn't come in in six days. So I'm rejoicing. I don't have to go to Jerusalem. Well, then after that, uh, we're out in Beaver Creek, a Welsh church, my wife is Welsh, and uh, we're having a meeting. Mm. And I've got this meeting in Lake Oswego. Mm. And that's about a, normally a 45-minute drive. Mm -hmm. Well, I get up into Oregon City, and it starts snowing. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving a little 74 Super Beetle in my wife's car, and she used to take the Buick Estate Wagon back with the children because mm -hmm. they wouldn't all fit. We drove two cars because I'd have to leave early from the service. They have Welsh things. It would go on in late in the afternoon. And I had to be over there by 2 for a meeting in this home meeting at these people's house in Lake Oswego, Oregon. So I leave early, right after lunch. The car dies on me up above Oregon City. And I coast off to the road. It won't start. I check for fire on the plugs and everything. It's got fire. It's got everything. There's no reason that that motor shouldn't start but I'm getting cold, it's snowing. I'm oh. not dressed for a snowstorm in mm. Oregon. I'm mm. dressed in the jacket I was wearing this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm getting cold. Half a mile or less, little more than a, a, a quarter mile to a half, back down the road is a bowling alley. That's the only residence I know of that I'm there. I'm in front of a real estate office, but there's no houses around, it's closed. It's Sunday afternoon. The battery's dead now. I've tried it so many times. Mm. So I go back down to the bowling alley mm -hmm. to call the people. Mm. I don't know anything, but their last name is Mahar. I don't know the man's name or the woman's name. I don't have their address. Mm. I know it's Lake Oswego. So I stand there at the payphone in the bowling alley and I said, Lord, there are several Mahars here and I only have one quarter. <laughs> this got to be shot. right the first time. Yeah, only one shot. Give me the name of which Mahar and John comes to my name. Okay, Lord, here goes the quarter. And because uh, I didn't have any other money, cash with me. I had a credit card, but no cash with me. Now, here goes the quarter. I look in the book, there's John Mahar, Lake Oswego. Oh. Thank you, Lord. All right, wow. that's got to be it. It's got to be it. Well, but there's three other Mahars in Lake Oswego, but no Johns. Oh, wow. Okay, here goes, Lord. I call. Now, by this time, I am an hour and a half late for my meeting. Oh. I call. A woman answers. And I says, hello, John. She says, no, this is Judy. Henry, where are you? What? I said, is this the Mahars? John? He says, yes, I'm his wife, Judy. I says, oh, thank God. I says, I'm over here in, in Oregon City in front of a real estate office right off of 99W, and my car just died. I can't get it going. My battery's dead. Mm. She says, we got a mechanic. John will be on his way with jumper cables. And I've got a mechanic in the meeting, known him for years. Where is it at? And I give him the exact, says right above the bowling alley, a quarter mile to a half. I know right where it is. He's on his way. 
So they get there. And he doesn't put the jumper cables on or anything yet. He says, let me check it. Well, the key's still in the ignition. He turns it, boom, 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 and it starts right out. And John and the mechanic look at me like, hey, come on. I said, it was dead. Well, he says, follow us. We've got jumper cables. If it dies again, we'll give you a jump. No need looking behind the, the trunk, you know, in the, in the motor. It's running. Let's get out of here. You're late. So by the time we get there, I'm two hours late for the meeting. People are still there. They've been praying. They want to hear me. It's a home meeting. So I just share for 45 minutes because I'm not going to share for two hours. I got people now. It's heading into the time where they need to get home and go to their evening service. So I just share for a little, little less than an hour. And Judy gets up and says, well, we have uh, cookies and hot chocolate and... Uh, and uh, people are getting up and say, well, we got to go. We got to be in the service and all. And uh, she brings me hot chocolate and, and a cookie. Mm. And uh, I'm sitting there. And the Lord says, as these people are ready to go out the door, mm. the Lord says to me, stand up and say, by the way, all the money's in for walking the border of Great Britain between England and Wales. And I said, well, Lord... Well, that's true. I can mention it now. So ask for their prayers. Yeah, you want me to have people praying. You want me to have people praying for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I stand up and I said, uh, I don't know what this means to you, except I hope you'll be praying for me. Uh, all the money's come in. I'll be going uh, in April and I'll be walking and praying the border between England and Wales because all the money's come in for it. Well, I sit back down and enjoy my hot chocolate and <laughs> cookie. And uh, these people leave, and uh, I'm ready to leave. About everybody's gone. And Judy Mahar hands me an envelope, and she says, uh, Henry, we've never had an offering here in this home meeting like this. We've been going for 12 years. We've never had an offering like this. You need to look at the amount. And I open it up. Here's some cash, and here's one check. The check is exactly the amount for Jerusalem my wife had calculated. She had called lodgings and all that. It's exactly the amount for airfare from England to Jerusalem, back to England. And I just sit down <laughs> right there. And I said, oh, Lord, this means Jerusalem. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, the Lord told me to go for 14 days, two weeks, and walk and pray every street of the old city and the new city of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I have withstood it. But I said it didn't come in within six days. Mm. I thought that. I didn't say it out loud. But that's the amount for Jerusalem. So I go home and I said to my wife, I know it didn't come in within six days, mm. but uh, it's, it's the amount we agreed on mm. for the family and for me. And she goes and does the book work and writes down the check number and the amount for sending a receipt to the people, the date it was written and all that. Mm. And she puts that in the books. I don't pay any attention to it. And she didn't either. The date. Mm. She's off to the bank mm. with the check. Mm -hmm. Judy Mahar calls me. Mm. Henry, you know you said that's for Jerusalem. And then you testified that the money always came in within six days. And the money was in for walking the border of England and Wales. Because I talked to you about it. I says, yeah. She said, did you look at the date? On the check. And I says, no. She said, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. I, I just got a call from the people, these people from San Diego stayed with last night. They left this morning for San Diego to go home. They were going to leave. They wanted to get to Southern Oregon. We talked them into coming to hear you. Now, here's a miracle, Henry. They wanted to leave. But they didn't leave until you stood up 
saying all the money's in for Jerusalem. Then they walked out the door. Well, they were ready to go out the door. And you said all the money's in for walking the border between England and Wales. They then asked what your name was and wrote, gave you, she said, they gave me this check. And she said, Henry, the people of the house just called and said, didn't he say the monies came in within six days? The sixth day was the day they wrote the check. But they were waiting to find whoever it was, and they were heading up into Seattle and Oregon for the holidays. They were waiting to find the person that said, by the way, all the money's in for walking the border between England and Wales, and that's who you give this check to. Fill it out for this amount. Don't sign it yet, (laughs) so nobody can cash it if it's found, but date it. And then fill it out for whoever says all the money's in for walking Great Britain and the border of England and Wales. And I said, what was the date? She says, well, it's interesting. The date was the night of our meeting last night. And I said, that was the sixth day. That was the sixth day. Oh, my goodness. They had written it way before. I says, well, what made them do that? And she said, both the husband and the wife the night before had the same dream. A man came to them and said, fill out a check for this amount. And when you hear the man say, all the money's in for walking the border between England and Wales, that's who it goes to. That was a miracle. Both husband and wife have the same dream, confirmed it the next morning, that morning, and then they come to the meeting that afternoon. I'm two hours late, and they still stay because they want to really get leaving and go to Southern Oregon for the night so they have a less drive all the way to San Diego. The miracle of God keeping them there. Now, that's miracle number one Mm. of getting me to Jerusalem. All right. I go to Jerusalem. So, Henry, um, I still don't quite comprehend the time sequence that about the six days. Because okay. they, uh, they wrote the, the check they wrote on the, the sixth check. day. The morning before, mm-hmm. they wrote the check because bo- up in Seattle, both husband and wife had the same dream that right. night. The next day, they come to Lake Oswego, Oregon, stop to visit friends. Mm-hmm. The friends talk them into coming here, this man that walks all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so they come to the meeting, but said, but we're going to leave right after the meeting. Mm -hmm. No later than four. Mm -hmm. We got to leave because we want to get to Southern Oregon before it gets too late Mm -hmm. and stay the night there and then go on to San Mm -hmm. Diego home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have this check with them, Mm -hmm. but they don't know who to fill it out to. Mm -hmm. And as they're leaving the meeting, Mm -hmm after staying way longer than they should have, mm-hmm. they didn't even stay for refreshment. They were going to leave when I stand up and say, by the way, all the money's in for mm-hmm. walking the border. Mm. They have to ask, what is his name again? Yeah. And they fill out the check to Henry Groover, mm. sign it, mm. hand it to the lady and say, mm. make sure he gets this. Mm. And they didn't know the detail. She didn't know the detail right, yet, the right. lady of the house. Mm. Then she calls me the next morning and They're telling the host, their host, where they were staying, because they had to go back and get their suitcase and things, because they'd stayed there. And so they're telling them the miracle of this. Didn't he say the money's come in within six days? Mm -hmm. And he told back that that expired tonight, Mm -hmm. the six days. Mm -hmm. We filled this out in the six days in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So all the monies were there within six days for Mm. me to walk Jerusalem Mm. and had come in already for walking the border between England and Wales. So that's Mm. how I could stand up Mm. when the Lord said, stand up and say, by the way, all the money's in for walking the border between England and Wales. But I wasn't going to say Jerusalem because the money wasn't in to my thinking. Mm. But it was on that checks of the people sitting right there or just getting ready to go out the door. So that's one thing trigger another. Yes. <clears throat> Miraculous. And so then I get to Jerusalem. Now, 
how did I get to Jerusalem? I'm already walking the border between England and Wales. I go back to Guildford, England to stay with the Olivers, and the next day I'm to fly out from Gatwick Airport to Jerusalem. And uh, so uh, <coughs> there's a lady and her daughter wants to take me to the airport. Mm. It's Heathrow I'm to leave, not Gatwick. Mm. <coughs> and we, the, down the M25, 25 kilometers south of London is, is Guildford, England, where I was staying. She didn't want me to take a transport to go to the airport in Heathrow. She said, I'll take you and you can stay later and I can get you there quicker than a transport because they stop do all these shuttle stops. So we could have more time to visit with the Olivers. And I said, fine. So here we go down the M25 and it splits toward Gatwick versus Heathrow. One's on one side of London, one's on the other. She turns on, on, on the M25 that makes a loop around London I'm sure the wrong way, because I had walked London by then. I knew London. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, weren't you supposed to go the other way to get to Heathrow? She said, I know you've got to be in Heathrow. I know a shortcut. Well, we drive and drive, and we pass Gatwick. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, we're on the opposite side of London. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to be at the airport three hours before mm -hmm. my flight. Mm -hmm. And... We only got about 35 minutes to get there three hours before. Mm -hmm. And she says, well, well, we're going. Well, what she's thinking, I don't know why, the M25 is closer that way to Heathrow than this way. Mm -hmm. So I keep quiet. We get to the Dartmouth Tunnel that goes under the, the Thames River and, I, and pay toll. And I said, ask the man how far it is to Heathrow. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, ma'am, he says, it's about the same distance if you reverse and go the other way versus this way. And I, my blood just went cold. And I said, oh, Lord, we won't make it. We won't make it three hours before. I hope they're not strong on that. I get there an hour and 40 minutes before my flight. Mm -hmm. She wants to wait in case if I missed it. I no way, just go. I, I've got to move. And I grab my, my backpack and run into Heathrow, go up to the counter. It's closed. I'm running up and down the counter. Is there any ticket takers in there? Anybody here for ticket? No, they left. They left. They, they, this counter's closed for England for the next flights. So I run down to the next counter and I say, I need a, a boarding pass for for. Tel Aviv, England, for, uh, uh, for Tel Aviv, Israel. And the man says to me, he says, there's only one hope for that. He so says, you he, don't have a boarding pass. I says, no. He says, run to the gate. Maybe they'll give you a boarding pass there. But if the gate is closed, Prince Charles will not get you on that flight. You'll have to take the flight tomorrow, 24 hours later. It's only one flight to Tel Aviv, British Airways, per day. Mm. I go running, I'm out of breath, the gate is closed. Mm. I go all the way back to him, he says, sir, that's it, you're supposed to be here three hours, you're down to an hour and a half now. Mm. You're half the time, they're strict on this. You know the ferry that was bombed a few days ago mm. by the terrorists, they are strict on the three hours now. I missed my flight. Mm -hmm. That got me 24 hours late to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I get to the, the lodging that we had reserved. Now you gotta remember, this is April, this is heading into Easter. Mm -hmm. I had my flight reserved from way back in between Christmas and New Year's. My, my flight reserved then when the money come in and my lodging in Jerusalem. I get there and they said, I'm sorry, you were not here. And so it's all canceled. So it's canceled. And I said, well, can't I have a room? They said, this is we, have, we have tour buses loaded here. People are begging for rooms. There are no rooms available. You missed your opportunity. We do not hold it. Well, can you refer a hotel? That, no, I don't know of any. They're all full. Don't you understand? This is Easter. The Christians are loaded here. 
I go down the road, hotel after hotel. No, we're full, we're full. I go to the YWCA. Knowing it's Young Women's Christian Association, I thought, well, I'm going in, I'm desperate. I'll stay in Young Women's <laughs> room if I have to, you know what I mean, that's reserved. And they have a room. Oh, thank you, Lord. So I take the room. I'm, I can't give the money quick enough. And uh, I was exhausted by then because I had stayed the night at Heathrow, mm. slept on the bench, got up. Here's another miracle. Got up and uh, go buy some postcards because I've got a whole day now to write postcards and send them out and to kill a whole day. I've got to fly out 10 that night. So I've got a whole day. I fall asleep on the bench and I go get some postcards and I go to pay for them, reach for my wallet and it's gone. Oh no, my British cash is all gone. I've got, I've got the money for Israel oh. under, my, under my belt here. You know, oh. I'm gonna put it in a, under my shirt. And, uh, but I don't have any British pounds or no, and, and my American money's gone. My driver's license is gone. My passport's in there. Oh no, oh no. And, and I'm walking away and I'm thinking, I've got to go convert some Israeli money to get, to get, get stamps to send these cards out I've written. And uh, oh man. And the Lord says, go back where you slept. And I laughed. I literally laughed out loud. I said, Lord, when I woke up, I was laying on that bench. There had to be 30 people in that cubicle standing all tight around me. The moment I set up, they sat down and I just got up and excused myself and made my way through them. The chance of my wallet? Uh -huh. Oh, come on. And the Lord uh -huh. said, go back where you were sleeping. Uh -huh. I go back and people don't like me. They don't like me trying to get back to where I was because they're waiting for the next chair, you know, seat available. Finally, I said, I don't want to sit down. I just want to go back where I was sitting. Finally, they open up. My wallet is right between a man's feet on the floor. Now, this sounds like a story, but as if Jesus were right there in the city of you, I wouldn't tell it any different. My wallet is sitting there. I reach down, pick it up, and this man looks up at me real <laughs> strange. I open it up. All my money's in it. Nothing's gone. I said, wow, thank you, Lord. Somehow you kept everybody from seeing it. That's my wallet. And the man kind of looked at me like, are you sure? You know, I said, yes, sir, it's me. I, I've got a passport that'll prove. He's, oh, get out of here, you know. And I leave and go pay. That was another miracle in a sense of, that my wallet was there. And uh, so I get there to Jerusalem. I don't have a room. I got a room at YWCA. I am exhausted because I didn't sleep hardly at all that whole night and didn't sleep very good the night before. I fall asleep and I'm sleeping so good. And uh, I woke up at about uh, the next morning, about 4.30, and I uh, hear this, you know what that sound is, don't you? It's the Iman up on the minaret oh, yeah, sounding yeah. for early morning prayers to the mm -hmm. mosque. Mm -hmm. And I look out and all these people are walking dressed in white going to the mosque mm -hmm. and down the down Damascus Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, oh boy. And I go back and I, well, I'm awake and I just kneel down and start to pray. And the presence of Jesus was so strong in that room. Honestly, I was afraid to open my eyes and look up. And the reason is because when I was 16, I asked the Lord, um, if I can live for you all my life and not see you, because in Pentecostal church, so many people were seeing Jesus all the time. Mm -hmm. And some of them did not live a good testimony and actually fell away from the Lord. And it hurt me so deep that they could have such a wonderful experience with Jesus and then walk away from him. And so at 16, I asked the Lord, if I can live my life mm. and never see you till you come for me mm. in death mm. or in the second coming, mm. that's how I want to live. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't look up. Mm. But his presence was so sweet. 
And I'm telling you, all the, the weariness and fatigue left my body. Mm -hmm. It's like he was saying to me, thank you, my son, for coming to my city. Mm -hmm. It's like he was welcoming me. And I just, I just knelt at that bed just weeping. I was just weeping in his presence. It was so sweet. And I was saying, Lord, you're so good. You got me here. I know you're going to strengthen me to walk today to city. Mm. And please don't let me hear the blood crying out. Mm. And this song and this sweetness was just saturating me. And I, and mm. I never heard the blood crying out. Mm. In all the days, 13 days I walked. Mm. And so I went back to sleep and slept so good. Went down for breakfast and... Uh, Realized I'd only paid for one night mm -hmm. and they told me how much and I was so glad to get a room I thought I could extend it mm -hmm. So after I had breakfast, I went to the desk and I said I'd like to secure uh, 12 more nights uh, at mm -hmm. least and uh, the lady said uh, There are no rooms available. We've got 11 tour buses coming in today. Every room is covered your room You have to be out in, a, in just a few moments. Mm. And I said, well, do you have a closet or somewhere I could sleep in? I'd sleep on the floor. Sir, there are no rooms available. Now get your things. You must be out in a few moments. The buses will be here soon. Mm. I said, well, I thought I had at least till 11 o'clock. We don't do that in Jerusalem. It was 9.30. Wow. Get your things and be gone. We need time to clean the room to put the others in. Oh, well, wow. Thanks loads. Jesus was more pleasant than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my backpack and I could you refer a room? No, this is, this is, don't you realize this is Easter? Mm -hmm. Easter's coming. Every room is full in Jerusalem. You mm -hmm. should have, you should have reserved. I said, I did, but I got here late a mm -hmm. day by problem with a flight. It wasn't my fault. And well, they gave your room away, didn't they? I said, well, of course. They, yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. Well, they do that here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. This time of year, you should never come if you don't really secure. Mm. Got a good tongue lashing <laughs> from the lady. So I go down the street, knocking on hotel after hotel. No room, no room. I come just about to the garden tomb entrance, mm -hmm. and the Lord says, turn around and go across the parking lot. Mm. Uh, okay, mm. that's the first he'd spoken to me. Mm. Turn around, head across the parking lot, look through the trees as I go halfway through Jerusalem Hotel. Mm. So I, I walk in there, mm. there's a man standing at the counter. Mm. He's American, mm. he speaks Southern English. Mm. And he's ordering a, a car rental. Mm. And I looked up at him as the man is making a call for him. And I said, uh, you're American. You're from the South. And he looks at me and he says, yeah, if you'd call Nashville the South. And I said, no, oh, that's, that's South for me because I'm from Portland, Oregon. He says, oh, yeah, you're a Northerner, all right. <laughs> I said, what are you doing here? He says, well, he says, I'm here for business a few days. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and he, he says, what are you doing? I said, well, I just finished my business and I'm getting a room and uh, I'm getting ready to, hopefully, if I can get a room. And the man says, you can have a room. And I thought, thank you. I says, for 13 days? He says, yes, I, I'll give it to you. Mm. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. It was an Arab, <laughs> Arab mm. hotel. And uh, so I says, I'm, I'm just going to park my backpack and... Uh, I get some postcards that I, I, I've written up, haven't sent yet. I want to finish sending them and go to the post office. Then I'm going to walk down to Bethany and uh, look around. I want to be around Lazarus' tomb and a uh, little time down there. And he looks at me and he says, you're going to walk? I says, yeah. He says, uh, now this is the, I got the room. I'm sorry. I got the room. Now this is the this is the twelfth day. I've finished walking Jerusalem. Sorry, I got ahead. Mm. I've finished walking Jerusalem. Mm. I've got two days left. Mm. 
and then I'm going to go to Tel Aviv mm. and stay the night and make sure I get my flight back mm -hmm. to England. And I don't want any chance. I want to be as close to that airport as mm -hmm. I can if I have to sleep in the airport. And uh, so I'm saying this to him. This is on the 12th day. I finished Jerusalem, and uh, I had checked out down Ben Yehuda Street coming back, yeah. I had checked out uh, all the different uh, tours, and I wanted to go to, I wanted to, go to Galilee. And so the tours for one day tours to Galilee was yeah. way too high. And I just thought, ah, oh, I'll just walk to Bethany and see Lazarus tomb and come back. And tomorrow morning I'll go to Tel Aviv and spend some time in Tel Aviv before my flight the next day and leave it alone. Well, that was my thought. Well, now I meet this man at the counter and he's Southern and, uh, and I tell him I'm going to walk to Bethany. And he looks at me strange and he says, you know, he says, from here, that could be between four and six miles mm. through the West Bank. He says, it's dangerous walking through the West Bank. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm driving to Egypt today. Mm. And he says, I, I will, uh, I'm getting my car rental. He says, if you'll be patient, I'll drop you off in Bethany. Mm -hmm. And he says, for that matter, he says, I'm going all the way to Egypt. I'm coming back tonight. If you want to go to Egypt, you can go to Egypt with me. <laughs> and I look at him and thought, well, I've never been to Egypt. I've finished my obedience uh, in Jerusalem. I'm done. Yeah, I said, I'd like to go to Egypt. Are you sure you're coming back tonight? He says, oh, yes. So I said, uh, well, OK, yeah, I'd like to go. Mm. And uh, how long till you leave? He says, well, as soon as I get my car here, it'll be probably 40, 45 minutes. I'm going to take my bag to my room and set up my room and uh, I'll be ready to go. I said, okay, I'm going to put my, my bag in and uh, get my room and I'll, I'll run down and post some postcards and I'll come back. I should be able to do all that. And he says, fine. So he finishes his business, heads off toward his room and I get my room and drop my bag off, grab my postcards, head for the post office, get my stamps, and post my cards that I didn't get posted out of London. And I'm heading back, and the Lord speaks to me, and he says, you didn't ask me. And my heart just went boom. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, you have been asking me 12 days straight about every street, every thought you have. You agreed to go with that man and you don't even know him all the way to Egypt. You didn't ask me. And I started crying, walking down the Damascus Road, asking the Lord to forgive me. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And uh, <laughs> I, a few days before I asked an Arab, how to get to a certain street and he took me down under Jerusalem somewhere and next thing I know I'm in a garbage dump area a big iron door opens and he says it's this way and we go into this room and a smell by the time my eyes adjusted garbage is heaped to the ceiling on both sides I turn around realizing he's put me in a garbage room there's no door on the other side I turn around he's got a big knife and he says now give me all your money or I kill you and he comes at me with this knife and I reach and get my wallet and I pull out what's equivalent to about a $5 note in shekels. And I said, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this now <laughs> and I'll give you the rest later and when you show me the street. And I thought, dear Lord, what a way to answer a man when he's coming at you with a knife. He lunges for the, 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 five, the, the note, trips, falls face down, knife and all in the garbage. I jump over him. Now he's closed the big iron door. The big iron door opens of itself. Now I oh. know this is hard for people to believe. It opens of itself. I didn't even know how it was latched. It's too dark in there. My eyes aren't adjusted well enough yet to know where the latch is. That big door opens. I run out and I come right between two big angels that are taller than I can reach. And they are dressed in such warrior uniforms. I've never seen such powerful looking angels. Mm. One's on each side of me. Mm. And I just stopped right in the middle of them. Mm. And they're, they're talking and laughing over my head. 
One looks down at me, and then they're talking and laughing, a language I didn't understand. Oh. I look back over my shoulder. Out the big iron door comes this guy with a knife. He sees, he saw my angels. Oh. He sees my angels. He lets go of the knife and takes off running full bore the opposite direction as fast as he could go looking back. I mean, they could have grabbed him and pinched his head off, I think. And I'm laughing now. <laughs> I'm laughing with them. And the one goes like this. And I follow him. I follow the one. The other one's behind me. And he reaches down and opens this door and goes like this. I step out, step down two steps. I look, and there's the name of the street I'm asking the Arab for uh -huh. right there. Uh -huh. And I look back, and they're gone. They disappeared. I closed the door, walked the street. Huh. Nobody, nobody in that Arab section confronted me. They were afraid of me after that. I think the word went around. You yeah. don't want to mess with this tourist. Mm. You ought to see those big men that, that walk with him. <laughs> I love it. So that had happened. See, I, I should have lost my life right there in the garbage yeah, dump. Yeah. I'm sure he would have killed me. Yeah, nobody would have He'd seen He'd have it. just taken my yeah. money anyway, but he wanted to know where my money was mm -hmm. to save time, and that's when I reached for my wallet. He didn't know that the major part of my money and my passport was under my shirt mm -hmm. against my skin. That's mm -hmm. what I do in those countries. Mm -hmm. I don't keep any mm -hmm. passport or, or mm -hmm. most of my money mm -hmm out where it can be pickpocketed. Mm -hmm. Remember that. You mm -hmm. go to these New York or wherever. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. But uh, so that was a miracle. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, well, then I meet this man and I'm going, I get my postcards posted and I'm repenting. And as I'm about, oh, probably 200 feet from the hotel entrance, this peace just comes over me. Mm -hmm. And I start drying my tears and, and I said, Lord, what does this peace mean? Mm -hmm. It means you forgave me, I know. Mm -hmm. But does it mean I could go to Egypt with him? Mm -hmm. I'd still like to go to Egypt mm -hmm. with him. And the peace of God just floods me. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, that means I can go to Egypt with this man. Mm -hmm. And uh, not just Bethany. And so... I, I go to go up the steps to go to the hotel. I'm only on the third step up to the Jerusalem Hotel. A little red car comes pulling up. Beep, beep. I turn around, look back. The man gets out. He comes up to me on the first step. He looks up at me. Now, I, I, I put a fleece before the Lord before this when I, when I felt he forgave me. I got to remember that. That's significant too. I said, Father in heaven, I believe by the peace that you're giving me now, it's okay to go to Egypt with this man, but I don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. I've never met him before. I don't have any idea. Mm -hmm. He said he just flew in from Turkey, mm -hmm. finished his business in Turkey. That's mm -hmm. all I know. Mm -hmm. But I know he's American. Mm -hmm. But in the first seconds that I meet him again, I want this to be a fleece before you. If you don't want me to go with him, mm -hmm. Let some little thing, I don't want to ruin his day. He was kind enough to offer to take me all the way to Egypt. Mm. I don't want to ruin his day, but let some little thing come out of his mouth that didn't go right. Mm -hmm. That's all, just a little negative, and I will take that as a signal. Mm. I'm not to go, and I'll excuse myself. So I had mm -hmm. made that fleece as I'm approaching the steps. Mm. I go up on the steps, beep, beep, here he comes. First step down below me. He looks up at me, puts out his hand, and he says, well, by the way, I'm Ron Wyatt. Mm. And I said, well, I'm Henry Gruber. Mm. And he says, Henry, he said, uh, you said you're from Oregon. Uh, what city is that? I says, well, it's Portland, Oregon. Oh, he says, yeah, I know about Portland, Oregon. I hear a lot about it. He says, but do uh, you still want to go? <clears throat> everything went great. I, I got the car before I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll be ready in five minutes if you want to go. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. He smiles the sweetest smile with his blue eyes. He looks me right in the eye. Mm -hmm. And he says, Henry, do you believe God speaks to people? 
I said, absolutely. <laughs> I am a Christian. He said, Henry, I'm a Christian too. And he says, he sure loves you. The way he's been talking to me about you. Forget <laughs> Egypt today. I'll go tomorrow. Have you been to Galilee? What? Wow. Have you been to... Now, this is Ron Wyatt. Yeah, so the Lord has been telling him about you. Have you been to Galilee? I says, no. He says, that settles it. He told me to take you to Galilee today and to buy you the best meal in all of Israel. And he said, it's right on the Sea of Galilee. It's St. Peter's Fish, House, Fish Restaurant. Wow. And he says, I eat every time I come to Israel. Uh, here, I always make it a point to eat there. They know me well. And he says, we're going to Galilee. This is your day. Egypt can come tomorrow. If you want to go tomorrow, that's up to you. But this is your day. He told me to take good care of you today. Wow. Oh, my word. We got into the car. And uh, I said, now you'll let me pay for the car rental today and the uh, petrol, uh, the gas, and, uh, and any expenses. Let me pay for the meal. He says, Henry... We'll talk about that later. Oh. Don't worry. Oh. I told you, this day is on me or no go. Oh. I said, wow. Ron, cars are expensive. I, I had looked into it. Oh. And petrol is, is $6 a, yeah, you yeah. Know, a liter. I mean, it's horrible. It's 6 $7 a gallon. And uh, Henry, let's not talk about that. He says... You know, I told you that I just came from Turkey. I says, yeah. He says, I have release from the Lord to tell you this. I'm going to tell you things today that are going to be hard for you to believe, but are going to bring that Bible. If you ever read it, I said, I read it all the time. He says, it's going to make that Bible come alive to you. I'm an archaeologist. And he says, I'm going to tell you about discoveries we've made that are right out of the Bible. Just relax and enjoy. When we get back to the hotel, he says, I have, I have frames, 21 frames of different parts of a documentary that are going to be made on Noah's Ark discovered. And he said, these frames are big pictures off of the filming, professional filming, the documentary that's going to be shown all over America, probably all over the world, and they want to compress it for television time, so I have to pick which frames we, don't, we can edit, which pictures, because, you know, everyone has many, many, many pictures, so they can compress by eliminating those frames. So he says, I'll give you all the evidence you need about Noah's Ark when we get back to the hotel tonight. Oh, my word. He took me to St. Peter's Fish House. We ate, sit there. He ordered enough for 10 people. <laughs> and he says, we got all day long. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I didn't know he thought I was starving, but I was living on sandwiches because I was walking. I'd, I'd buy meat and cheese and make my sandwiches in my room in the morning, carry it under my belt, the bag with my sandwiches, the other belt, I'd carry a water bag and I'd keep walking streets. That's how I walked every street so quickly, you know, and did uh -huh. it in 12 days. Oh. 12, 16 hours a day. I walked Jerusalem, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And, uh, oh. oh, he's taking me up over the mountain there, coming up out of Jerusalem, where we head down toward uh, Jericho in that direction and, uh, and the Sea of Galilee. And we're just talking. And all of a sudden, he pulls off the road. And he says, Henry, get out. And I look at him, because we're just kind of having a nice visit. And he says, get out. And I look at him like, did I say something wrong? He says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to be so blunt. I just saw something at a glance in the 70 trips to Israel, I've never seen. Oh. When, before I left for Israel, I had a vision. In the vision, 
I am standing looking down into Jerusalem. There's the mosque and all that. And the Lord in the vision says, turn around and look down. And I turn around from behind me, looking back 180. I look down through the valley and I see a blue spance of water. Hmm. And then a voice speaks from the, to me from above in the vision. Loose the shoes off your feet. For the ground you're standing on is holy ground. Mm. I'm asking people before I left, for the 14 days before I left mm. America, mm. is there such a place mm. that you can see Jerusalem and a blue spance of water, 180 degrees opposite? Mm. I think so, but I'm not sure. People that have been to Jerusalem many times. Mm. So no one was sure. Mm. Then he says... Stop, I want to show you something. Mm. We get up there, and he says, Now, you see Jerusalem? I says, Yeah. He says, Turn around. You see that blue spance of water down there? I've been here 70 trips. I have never seen that blue water. There's always a dusty cloud of the dust blowing through the valley. You never see Galilee like that. Oh. Here go the tears. Oh, so that blue space water is the Sea of Galilee. I when think it's it was not Galilee. Bawling. I don't think it was the Dead Sea. I, I, yeah. I never asked him which sea it was. Uh, I just uh, started bawling. Uh, As my wife said last night, yeah. don't write bawling your eyes yeah. out. <laughs> I am bawling so hard, he just looks at me and he says, take as much time as you need. I've got paperwork in the car I've got to work on today. I'll work on the paperwork. This is your day. Come to the car when you're ready. And he walks away. I go down loosing the shoes off my feet and go down on my face weeping. I believe you could throw a stone to the Mount of Transfiguration from there where Jesus was transfigured, where that is the traditional site. I believe I was standing right where the, the transfiguration with Peter, James, and John witnessing it took place. I believe it with all my heart. They're, they're 100 feet off where they built their tower. Yet, I don't think you could see it from there. <laughs> I believe he had me standing right where that took place. Either that or where he went and was caught up to heaven, one or the other. Mm. I wept and cried, soaked that dry dirt with my tears, and then I dried my face and went back and sit in the car, and he says, wow, Henry, that, uh, he says, you know, it's quite common for people to have experiences here, mm. but would, are you free to tell me what that was about? And I told him the vision, mm. and he said, so you have visions? Mm. I says, yeah, he says, well, I, I know of people that have visions, but they're not accurate. But obviously, this one was real, wasn't it? I says, yes, it was fulfilled. You were used to fulfill that vision. Yeah. I know I'm here by divine appointment. Mm -hmm. He says, well, I know you're here because God wants you here because he sure talked to me about you. <laughs> he made me cancel going to Egypt today. <laughs> we'll go. I'll go tomorrow. If you want to go, you can go. So he took me down through Jericho first. Mm. And he took me to the gate of the, of the dig of where Rahab the harlot's house was. She lived at the gate. So he, fo he found that place? Yeah, he showed me it. Her house and the brackets of the gate are up here. On the other side of the gate, the wall and everything is totally under the ground. Her house is the only house standing. That still stands, yeah. All the way around to her house is underground. It's under the floor of her house. The brackets are here. He showed me where we excavated way down under the earth. The brackets are there. The wall is there. When it says the wall fell down flat, it didn't fall over. It's like this. Yeah. He said, do you realize these walls are wide enough for chariot races on this? Wow. Up to 12 wide. 12. Yeah, so if the wall would have fell over, it'd still be as high, almost as high as it is, oh. 
by falling over versus going down. He mm -hmm. says, we found the walls went down into the ground except for Rahab, the harlot's house. We believe that is. Mm -hmm. That was the first awe that I was in of archaeology with Ron Wyatt. Mm -hmm. Well, then we go to Tel Aviv, down to the Galilee, and we have Peter's fish and all that. And so was, was that oh. recorded in some of his videos or uh, that, that, that wall? You know, I don't think he ever put that in his yeah, we, documentary. Yeah, we didn't see that in his... That's something you won't find in his videos. Needs to be mm. documented. It's yeah. awesome. Because it helps people understand what mm. the scriptures mm. means when it says the heart of the, mm. of the uh, Jericho mm. soldiers melted. Mm. Well, how would you feel if you're up there as a soldier and all of a sudden your wall is down and you're facing your enemy face to face? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Your spirit yeah. would faint. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Do we need a break? So he's We're okay. He's saying it's, it's 105 now. Oh, it's 105 now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so we need to move on. Move on, yeah. So then, so do you want to take some water? Yeah, because, yeah, we have. Yeah, we'll take like a drink. Less than one, and yeah. finish a little more documenting. Wow. <laughs> you talk about a sovereign move of God. I mean,. I didn't do anything to meet Ron Wyatt. God did it. Made me miss my flight, lose my hotel, put me in the same hotel as Ron Wyatt. Mm. He always stayed in the Jerusalem Hotel. Mm. I took uh, uh, my wife to Jerusalem. Mm. We went to the Jerusalem Hotel mm. with her. Mm. I asked for the rostrum if they had the record from 1989 in April and this about the 11th or something like that of April. He pulled it out, put it up. I showed my wife where I signed in and where I signed out from the Jerusalem Hotel. Mm. Richard Reeves of Wyatt Archaeological Research says, I met Ron Wyatt when he was digging on a dig and I was begging for money and food. I was starving. Now that's what Richard Reeves told these two critics of mine, these two theologians. Mm. That's a lie. Mm. He said, Ron Wyatt told him that before he died. I says, mm. I don't care what you say. Now, mm. I know Ron Wyatt was on heavy, heavy pain medication, the mm. heaviest you can have. Mm. I know people hallucinate. I know people talk weird. I don't believe much of anything that comes out of the mouth of mm. people that are dying on high, the highest pain medication you can mm. give them. Mm -hmm. They're hallucinating mm -hmm. and all. Mm -hmm. They certainly don't talk with organized thoughts. Mm. They're confused. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't believe that. Mm. He, that's what he holds to. Mm. Well, that's where I met him, and you can see Ron Wyatt signed in the 12th day mm. of my testimony. When I met him on the 12th day, I spent the night of the 12th, the day of the 12th with him, on the 13th and yeah. the 14th with oh. Ron. The morning of the 15th, he took me to Tel Aviv to the airport. Mm. <laughs> wow. So it's documented, it's on, documented that on that in the hotel. Yes. Wow. It's documented there. So, okay. So, so ever to continue? So, so ever continue. since, uh, ever since then, you started to get acquainted, become good friends. Yes. And, and I, you, you travel with him for like six months or something? Oh, I traveled with him years? off and on throughout the years. Throughout the years. Different oh. places, Israel, Turkey, uh, over to England, and uh, uh, up into uh, uh, um, uh, 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 oh, I can't even think of the name, no. Germany. It's up above Germany, Holland. Oh. Holland, and uh, yeah, he spoke. When that testimony of my meeting him went on cassette tape back to Portland, Oregon, people bought them by handfuls, my testimony, and sent them all over the world. My phone was ringing from all over the world in <laughs> Portland, Oregon, from uh. people that heard, is this true? Are you the one that was with Mr. Wyatt mm -hmm. and the Ark of the Covenant? Is it true the Ark of the Covenant mm -hmm. had been discovered? Mm -hmm. Just all over the world, it it Ron Wyatt said, "You're the best, uh, you're the best promotional speaker anybody could ever ask for." I said, "I'm not. The Lord is." Mm. God took that little cassette minute tape that was handheld by a woman sneezing, coughing, and everything. I was reporting to my intercessors when I came back what had happened. She took that to the big book Christian bookstore in in Portland. 
he began duplicating it. Didn't call me for permission, and was selling them for two fifty a piece. And people were buying them by the hand. Henry, we bought we bought that CD right, from from your ministry. Yeah, and, and it's titled the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. Okay, but it didn't talk about. Uh, I, I you talk about the the things that Nebuchadnezzar took away, and um, also. Book of Hebrew, yeah, you know, in that city, but, but it didn't about talk about Wyatt. right, and it didn't talk yeah. about like uh, the details that he he took you and show you the places that oh. re related yeah. to the Ark of Covenant. That's not in the CD. Oh, where I traveled with him, he took me into the garden tomb area. He showed me right where it is, right where the the, the three the cross, cross holes are, oh, and wow. said right underneath that. That's the chamber is there. So that's before he he covered it up. This is before, yeah. This is before they 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 went, yeah. They they completely camouflaged it and yeah. covered it because hmm. so many people were trying to get down in there. Yes, and uh, they were. And I, yeah, yes, they, and they were having trouble securing it, so they completely camouflaged it and covered it. Yeah, and uh, oh boy, that was it was fantastic. So uh, he he took you to. He to took share with us like the, some of the areas that we I mean, took, relating to the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, after the 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 meal, the Saint Peter's fish, he took me to what's called the Boneyard of Archaeology there on the Sea of Galilee, mm. and here here's to show how respected the man is in Israel. We went up to the security gate where all these archaeological things are. They're all numbered and all indexed where they were found. North south, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. parallel, and 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 right the, where they were found in Israel. That's called the boneyard of archaeology. We walked up to the gate. The security guard at the gate addressed Ron Wyatt, Mister Wyatt, "You're back in Israel. What are you working on this time?" Mm -hmm. Well, he says, "I've got this friend here, and I'd just like to show him a few of the artifacts that I've found in different places." And uh, he says, well, "Go right ahead." Now. People told me later that he isn't even allowed back in Israel. He is looked down upon. Oh, some some people you say never been to Israel and like oh, you know, all kinds of. I've been I've been to Israel with him six mm. times, mm. and one of those times we were in in Egypt and we came back mm. through Gaza, which was the highest secured entry into Israel. What do the security people, customs people, say to him as we approach? Mr. Wyatt, you're coming back to Israel. Welcome. Wow. How many are with you? Wow. Well, just him. Go on. Didn't wow. even check my bag or anything. Wow. You tell me he's not trusted in Gaza. They <laughs> check. They make. A, they make you oh. dump everything out. Yeah. Mr. Wyatt, you're back. Coming back to Israel. Who's? How many are? How many are with you? Well, just him. So he took you to to. <laughs> The, the crucifixion site. Yes, he took me to the crucifixion site and said the cross holes are right there, right up there, directly under mm -hmm. where we have dug down there is mm -hmm. where the Ark of the Covenant and mm -hmm. the furnishings are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, well, we won't put this on, but you know what I said yes. last uh, yes. earlier. Yes, yeah. And uh, I know the exact spot. I can still see it like it was yesterday. And uh, so he took me there. Well, well, he uh, before we went to Egypt the next day. Mm -mm, okay, yeah. I did go with him to Egypt. Uh, he said we need to go to Tel Aviv. Mm. Uh, he says it's going to be kind of a long day. I mm. says it's up to you. I had had a short night the night. I'd ball in half the night. We went back to my room just reading these things in the Bible that he had shown me that day. You know Jericho and. And Galilee, he had me stand there in the synagogue where the, they've excavated the synagogue. Mm -hmm. There's an X in the in the stone floor, right where they believe Jesus got up to read the scriptures. Oh. And he had me stand there, and he oh. said, Henry, to the best that all archaeologists and all we can ascertain, you're standing right where Jesus stood when it says he went in to read the scriptures as well, was I his say, custom. Uh, I start bawling again. I did a lot of crying back then with him. It was so precious. Talk about a tour, you know. Uh, 
ah. a self-guided tour to these sites oh. and all. It just, oh, tremendous. Took me all around Galilee, showed me the places where the pigs jump off and everything. Told me that, showed me the area of the Beatitudes. Wow. Showed me the, the, what they believe is Peter's house. He says, Henry, it wasn't St. Peter's house. He says, I guarantee you, it has all this is Roman mosaics in here. Mm. Peter would not have had that. This had to have been a centurion's house mm. or a very high ranking mm -hmm. Roman mm. official. Mm. This isn't Peter's house. He mm. was a fisherman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says the fishermen live around this area where they've excavated. That's more like the fisherman's house mm -hmm. toward Tiberius. <laughs> so even to so, where the, those mm. thousands of uh, pigs yes, they jumped, jumped into off the, the cliff old, and drowned. Yeah, yeah. Jumped, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the only place around the Sea of Galilee that could have happened. Oh. Only place. And uh, we had to go off the highway and hike down to that cliff. Wow. And, uh, there's another site where they, they take people that's very comfortable to go and look because there's a little drop off. But, but it's he not says, the real place. That place is well worn from people, but he says, now this is going to have some weeds to go down to the real cliff. He says, this has got to be it because the other place, the pigs could have climbed out, just swum a little ways and they can swim and climbed out. I want you to look here. They'd be drowned before they'd get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he was that wow. way. He was that way. He just, he he just thorough. Was so very thorough. Sad. yeah, very thorough. Yeah, very thorough. Uh, he took me to uh, to um, one of the trips. He took me to where Moses smote the rock instead of speaking to it. Mm -hmm. And he took me to where Korah, Dathan, and Abihu were swallowed up and are forty-five feet underground. Mm -hmm. And I climbed up to uh, do that, and that's where Dr. Baumgartner did the core drillings. The whole side of the mountain is eroded away, and just it, it curves, it washed out of the earth, making its, its river, and Cora, Dathan, and Abaya was here and had the choicest campsite, I'm telling you, and they were murmuring against Moses. They had first drink of the water coming out of the mountain, you know, and complaining, I just, no wonder the Lord, it wasn't a, it wasn't a little thing, their complaint, it really irritated the Lord. That's why he said, I've had enough. Get all of him and his people and get them together. Now stand back. Down they went. Mm. 45 feet underground. Mm. And I stood where they did the test dig, where they are under mm. there. I have stood up on Mount Nebo, where he excavated, where, where uh, Aaron was, was buried. He found where Aaron was buried. Oh. And uh, he took me where Abraham's tomb was and Sarah's Abraham's and I said are they in there and he says Henry we couldn't find Aaron's bones we you're not going to find Abraham's bones I oh. says why did somebody steal away he says Henry you know the word better than that where were they when Jesus was resurrected oh the patriarchs were seen walking around the holy city hey eh? Abraham Aaron, all of them were walking around in truth. There was that was the first resurrection. That was their That's resurrection. The first fruit. That was the first fruits of them that slept. And we've got so much books and doctrine written about the first fruits of them that slept, and we forget about the resurrection of the Lord when that was the real first fruits. He was resurrected, then they were resurrected. He's the first fruits, and they were the first fruits with him. <laughs> blows away a lot of this doctrine about all the first fruits going to go up first and the rapture and then the others and all. Uh -huh. oh. No, no, no. First root, fruits of them that slept. <laughs> oh. They were in Abraham's bosom, remember? Yeah. 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 They were truly, that's, if you want to think soul sleeping, they were soul sleeping in a sense, if you want to think of it until Jesus fulfilled or consummated mm -hmm. the covenant of redemption mm -hmm. fully. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> wow. It's awesome. Isn't it beautiful how the word of God comes alive through archaeology? Yeah. yeah. And through Ron, he just helped me understand so many things. Yeah. He took me to a cave that had the bones of the remains of giant. The little finger Where? was 21 inches long. What? what? 21 inches long, the little finger. 
And outside the cave were stones, perfectly round stones, about a little bigger than a basketball. A whole pyramid of them, like you'd stack cannonballs. Yeah. And, and I said, uh, what are these? He says, well, those are stones that they, the uh, giants carved. And I said, what did they carve them for? He said, well, they threw them at the children of Israel. And I reached down and grabbed the top one. And I, it, I said, this has got to be 60 pounds. Oh. And I put it back down. Yeah. And he says, uh, well, that's what they threw at the children of Israel. So wh he, where is the cave? It's in the mountains of Kadesh Barnea, as you're heading into it. Yeah. And then he took me back in the cave. This is where the giants, they've removed the bones, of course, and all. Yeah. But he has, he has a little finger. <laughs> <laughs> he has it. <laughs> and it proves it. But he, I don't know what happened to that. I don't know oh. where it is. Wow. But uh, he says, you realize, from here to here, their hand was 21 inches. Wow. 21 inch palm. He says, they could pick up that rock and throw it like a baseball. Oh. But he says, you know what the Lord threw it at them. And I says, yeah, I know that one. You're not going to get, he threw thunderbolts, lightning bolts on them. He says, the giant that they removed from here, one whole side of it is burned, is charred. And I said, that proves the scripture that the Lord threw thunderbolts at them and burned them. Oh. <laughs> you don't come against my children. Oh. <laughs> Wiped them out. The children of Enoch right there. Hallelujah. Oh. Things like that the man showed me. It's just wow. amazing. Uh, we crisscrossed Israel. He showed me, went down to Ashkelon, and... Uh, he says, now, right out there, he says, they had, I had come back with a team and they canceled my permit to do the dig. Mm. I had found the cross holes, but I hadn't gone and dug underneath. And he says, so they canceled my permit. I had all these people from America that were ready to help me dig mm. and I couldn't dig. Mm. So I brought them here to Ashkelon to swim. Mm. And he said, I was out there swimming right out there, just, just less than a hundred yards. He said, it's only waist deep. And he says, I was out there and I had my goggles on and all. I'm always looking for things. And he said, I stumbled over something. And I thought, well, this is sandy bottom. What is this? And he says, I went down and here's a vase sticking out of the sand. The vase. A vase like a water pot vase, yeah. you know. And he says, I start clearing it. And he says, this vase is about this long. Mm. And it has a big mouth on it. Mm. And he says, then I begin realizing these aren't stones sticking all over out here. These are vases, 100 yards out into the sea. Of, into wow. the sea. So he says, I went out, got dressed, went to the head of the Department of Antiquities in Ashkelon and said, I have found something that I think is of significance for you people. I think you need to come and look. Mm. They went and he stayed there and, and accompanied it. They took one of those vases out, opened it up, it was full of human remains. Human remains. They found, he found the burial site of the Philistines. Catherine Kenyon, in the late 1920s, plowed all through that area trying to find a grave site of the Philistines. Couldn't find it. He found it out there. Why? In the house that she excavated, their holy temple, which you can see, is Dagon. Hand broken, head broken off. They glued them back on. They're standing up there. You can see them. What, in, right in Ashkelon. Go to the temple of Dagon right there. You can see still it. Still there. Still there. And they glued it back. The, the they statue is still on. there. Yeah. <sighs> and standing over in a corner on one side of Dagon is a woman holding like Mary holding a Christ child. And I said, is that, what's a statue, Catholic statue of, of, of Mary and the Christ child? He says, Henry, don't say that. That's the queen of heaven. That's, that's, that's Greek mythology. He says, that's not Mary, that's mm -hmm. the queen of heaven. Mm -hmm. She's here, that's way before Mary. This dates clear back to David's times. Yeah. 
Es- es- Eshtar, yeah. Yeah, Eshtar and all that. Yeah, Eshtar and all that. Yeah. And, and uh, um, Tammuz. Yeah, and Tammuz yeah. and all yeah. that. We won't listen to that or worry yeah. about that. But uh, so <laughs> he shows me that. Well, what happens? It's on his video. He discovered that. They were so excited that they said, we'll give you your permit to go on continue in the dig. You have discovered some, one of the most famous things that we have been looking for all the time. Hey, stop ringing, please. <laughs> I forgot about that phone. I'd have turned it off. So, so the, the, the so, vase... Yeah, it's not. All so of them the, are the loaded vase. with human remains. Okay, now, I, so, so um, that's the burial site of... And that's how they bury? The yeah, God. because they believed in the fish god. See, the fish god, so the head of a, a fish, the body of a man, so the head is the fish, so they put their people in these burial pots, and all that dates way back to the time of the Philistines, the remains that they pull out of those pots. So the vase would look mm-hmm. like a fish body? Is that how? The vase, I, I don't know. I, uh-huh. I didn't ask that. Uh-huh. What, I didn't see it. Okay. Uh, I didn't go out there. I probably should have gone out there and looked because uh-huh. there, there were a lot of them out there yet. He says they've removed a lot of them. Uh-huh. But every one they've removed are filled with human remains. Uh-huh. And they're sealed. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. And they, because they believe in fish God, that's why they bury, they bury in under the water. Under the water. Uh-huh. And Catherine Kenyon had looked and looked and looked and scoured the land all over for any burials and said, this is weird. How can this be? Why would their temple be here and no graveyard? Did they burn all their people? They thought, I think up to that time, that they cremated. This proved it different. Well, that restored his permit for the Ark of the Covenant. Otherwise, it would have been shut down because a new head of antiquities had come in. Yeah. And he didn't want Americans in there digging around. Oh, (laughs) wow. So, but that, that is after he... Hold on, but uh, hold on. <laughs> no, no, way. you met you met him in in nineteen ninety nineteen eighty nine, April eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, so that's after the Ark of Covenant and everything was yeah. was found by him. He, uh, when he was on the way on the initial trip that I met him, uh, that thirteenth day, the next day or fourteenth day, uh, he was on the way. We were going to go to Egypt. But he said, uh, I have to go, uh, a man by the name of Fazold, he's an underwater specialist. He mm-hmm. discovered this big ancient clipper ship treasure out in the Mediterranean, out in the uh, Atlantic, down in South Atlantic, that was full of gold and all this, uh, David Fazold. Okay, David Fazold. Uh, he was considered, there are documentaries done by him and all of treasure hunting underwater. And he'd heard about this discovery of the Red Sea crossing. Mm. And so he wanted to come with David, mm. with, with Ron Wyatt, mm. and do some work. So mm. he said he's going to bring his underwater equipment. Mm-hmm. So I have to go to Tel Aviv today mm. to meet customs, mm. to walk him through to be sure he documents every piece of equipment that he has. Oh. If you don't document you serial number, it what it is, you can't take it out. Oh, he and he has some very expensive equipment, so I have got to get him through customs mm-hmm. properly, mm-hmm. or he'll lose mm-hmm. half his gear. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to take a hotel, mm-hmm. and, and tomorrow we'll go to Egypt with him. But I've mm-hmm. got to go today to rent some boats and get ready for the exploration. Mm-hmm. And so you and I will go. But he said, before we get to the airport, now he said, I have my subsurface interface radar mm-hmm. scanner in the trunk. I won't leave it in my room in the mm-hmm. hotel. Mm-hmm. I'm keeping it with me. But I don't dare park this thing and us two go into the airport. Mm-hmm. It won't be in that trunk. The car won't be there when I get back. They know I carry expensive gear. So will you do me a favor? You have a license, right? I said, yeah. He says, it'll be good enough if anybody stops you. But abide by the law, but keep driving around and coming back in front of the terminal and when David comes out then we'll fetch him and take him to his hotel and then we'll go on to Egypt so so he said so I, I want to do that but now he says before we get to the airport because I don't want to talk about this at all when we're with David Fazel but the Lord told me I can tell you this and that's when on the way to Tel Aviv 
he told me about the Ark of the Covenant and the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, so before that time, he didn't. He didn't tell anybody. It, he wasn't making it known. Wow. And I come back to America. He didn't tell me not to tell anybody. Oh. And I'm giving it in my testimony. And that little cassette tape on the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant, that's the first the public has heard it. It goes all over the world. It went viral all so over the world. So we got to have that tape. Uh, yeah, you show that. That's the, on that tape. That testimony, yeah. Uh, my because testimony. I, I don't know the mm -hmm. one we bought is the same one or not. It no, that's not the, same the one. first one. I've never duplicated that one. I haven't put it out as my original testimony. Oh, so we got to have that one. You please, gotta have please. that one. That's back in in uh, Iowa. Becky and, I, and I need to have Becky find it. I think it's on that shelf in my wife's walk-in closet. Uh, we have all my history of cassette tapes. Oh, maybe we. I think it's there. I hope okay. it is. Okay, because we want to document it. We don't want to record it again. Yeah. And like, we, there must be like millions or like oh. at least like millions, millions, and millions. I made a few mistakes. You on know, it. Chinese uh, uh, Christians they they want to hear this. <laughs> the um, original one. Yeah. That's the tape that went viral around the world. Oh. And uh, my phone started ringing when I got back to, back to where I lived in Portland at that oh. time. And when we moved to, to Iowa, Woodbine, Iowa, uh, we let the house out to some people oh. on the condition we will pay the monthly bill for the phone. Mm -hmm. Now, not your long distance call, but mm -hmm. on this condition, mm -hmm. Every call you get internationally or anywhere, mm. you give them my number in mm. Iowa. That's mm. the reason we'll pay the phone bill. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. paid that phone bill for three years for them. And, and they would refer the people to my phone in Iowa. Wow. <laughs> so you, 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 are, you are the first one who to leaked announce out. it to the world. Yeah. The, they'll use yeah. you to. Yeah. Uh, he found it, but you are like the mouthpiece. I was the mouthpiece. That's why he says you're the best PR agent anybody could ask for. Huh. You you introduced me to the world. He was virtually unknown up to that. Yeah, time. he's kind of, kind of timid, un, understated guy. And yeah. I didn't even know I was doing it. See, he yeah. didn't tell me, and I was giving it to my intercessors. And that lady had that little recorder. I didn't even realize she was recording. I didn't know it was recorded, but I felt like they needed to know there were 25 intercessors. The average age was about 70 years uh -huh. old mm. in that room of 25 mm. intercessors. Mm. Most of them have gone to be with the Lord. But mm. Judy Mahar, I mentioned, yes. she was in that room. The one that invited me to Lake Oswego that became the, mm. she'll verify what I said about all the money's in for for walking the border between England and Wales. She's mm -hmm. the one that handed me the envelope, said, you need to look at it. Mm. She'll verify that. Okay. So, and well, the I, people's testimony from San Diego. So yeah. 